A hush fell over the crowd. Thousands had gathered, eyes fixed on the launch platform. Today marked humanity's first true leap into the great cosmic ocean, a voyage to the stars. And I, Simon, was entrusted with this monumental task. The hopes of a species yearning to break free from its cradle. To reach out, explore, discover. The countdown had begun. 5. Images of Earth flashed through my mind. 3. And then we were rising, leaving our home behind. The rumble slowly subsided. Echo, our home for years, was a marvel of engineering. Our destination, Kepler 186F, a potential second home for humanity. Outside my viewport, the universe unfolded in its infinite glory. Earth, a pale blue dot, home. Life on Echo was different, confined yet freeing. Every day brought new challenges, new discoveries, Moments spent gazing at the stars, dreaming of our destination. I missed Earth, but was filled with awe and wonder. The constant acceleration of 1G was key to our mission. It provided us with artificial gravity, a necessity for long duration space travel. This journey was not just across space, but also through time. The faster we travelled, the slower time would pass for us compared to Earth. Our sacrifice for the future was absolute. Days on echo blurred into weeks. Routines set in. Exercise, maintenance checks, scientific observations. They filled our hours. We were accelerating constantly, building up an unimaginable velocity. Every day, we received messages from home but the time lag grew longer. I found solace in the ship's observatory, feeling a connection to something larger than myself. The universe was a dynamic, ever-changing entity. The stars, once fixed points of light, now seemed to shift and dance. As we accelerated towards the speed of light, The light waves from distant stars were compressed, shifting towards the blue end of the spectrum. The space behind us grew darker, blacker, emptier. It felt like we were leaving a part of ourselves behind. Life on board Echo settled into a new rhythm. We were a closed ecosystem, dependent on advanced technology for survival. Our bodies adapted to this constant state of acceleration. We were pioneers, not just of space, but of time itself. The messages from Earth became fewer and farther between, each one a precious link to the world we left behind. The concept of time dilation became an inescapable reality of our voyage. Days on Echo became weeks on Earth. Weeks morphed into months. I remember celebrating my 35th birthday aboard Echo. We were not just explorers, we were time travellers, flung into the future while our past faded into a distant memory. Communication with Earth became increasingly difficult. Messages once filled with news and well wishes became shorter, more sporadic. I clung to each transmission, each digital whisper from a world that felt both familiar and alien. The speed of light stood firmly in our way. Our messages took longer and longer to reach their destination. The messages from Earth dwindled to a trickle, then finally stopped altogether. We had crossed a threshold, a point of no return where communication became virtually impossible. We were truly alone, yet amidst the grief and despair, a flicker of hope remained. We were pioneers, explorers, charting a course through the stars, 
our eyes fixed on a future that promised new beginnings. Space and time, the Milky Way, once a band of diffuse light, now dominated our view. We were like sailors of old, crossing a vast cosmic sea. Each day brought new wonders, new challenges. The universe had come alive around us, a symphony of light, motion and energy. One of the strangest sensations of travelling at such incredible speeds was the apparent contraction of the universe. As we accelerated closer to the speed of light, the distances between objects in our direction of travel appeared to shorten. Stars and galaxies that were once light years away seemed to draw closer. This phenomenon, known as length contraction, was another prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity. The universe was determined to warp our understanding of distance. We were not just travelling through space, but through time as well. Millennia were slipping away with every passing day aboard Echo. If we ever reached our destination, it would be a world utterly alien to us. We carried the hopes and dreams of a civilization on our shoulders. And so, we pressed on. Our tiny ship, a fragile spark of consciousness, adrift in the cosmic ocean. Life aboard Echo had a peculiar normalcy to it, a normalcy crafted from the extraordinary. We were hurtling through the cosmos at unimaginable speeds, and yet we walked, ate, slept, almost as if tethered to Earth. This semblance of gravity was our constant companion, thanks to our relentless acceleration. 1G, the same force that pulled us down on Earth, now held us to the ship's deck. It was a constant reminder of home. The universe, viewed from within our metal shell, had a different quality to it. It was a universe viewed through a porthole, a vast silent movie projected onto the curved screen of our observation deck. The stars, those distant suns, were reduced to points of light. The true grandeur dwarfed by the immensity of the void. And yet, despite this detachment, we were intimately connected to this universe. It surrounded us, permeated us. It filled our waking thoughts, haunted our dreams. We studied it, measured it, tried to decipher its secrets. It was our constant companion, our silent judge, the ultimate arbiter of our fate. We had created our own little universe within the belly of the Echo, a self-sustaining ecosystem, a haven of light and warmth in the cold vastness of space. We nurtured hydroponic gardens, recycled our air and water, created our own weather patterns. We had become, in a sense, gods of our own small creation mimicking the delicate balance of our home planet. But unlike gods, we were bound by the laws of physics, by the limitations of our technology. We were still vulnerable, still susceptible to the whims of the cosmos. A stray micrometeoroid, a malfunctioning life support system, a miscalculation in our trajectory. Any one of these could spell our doom. And so, we lived with a heightened awareness of our own mortality, a constant reminder that our existence, even amidst the vastness of the universe, was fragile, precious, and ultimately fleeting. The universe, once a silent tapestry of stars, had found its voice. As we accelerated, the light from distant objects shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum, Stars once yellow-white now blazed with an intense electric blue. As our speed increased, so did the intensity of the blue shift. Stars once separated by vast space now appeared closer, merging into a brilliant azure haze. It was a breathtaking sight, 
a cosmic light, show unlike anything ever witnessed. We were active participants in a grand cosmic dance, altering our perception of the universe. The cosmos, for all its beauty, played by its own set of rules, challenging our understanding of reality. The faster we went, the more pronounced the blue shift became. Stars on the leading edge blazed with an almost unbearable intensity. It was as if the universe itself was trying to outrun us. And then there was time. Time, that elusive concept, that intangible fabric of our existence. As we approached the speed of light, time began to slow down for us. We aged more slowly than our counterparts back on Earth. We had become cosmic time travellers, our existence a paradox. We were voyagers on a one-way journey into the unknown. As our speed increased, the universe outside transformed into a tunnel of distorted light. Stars and galaxies streamed past us like fireflies in a whirlwind. Familiar constellations stretched and blurred, their patterns lost in motion and colour. The universe appeared as a rushing torrent of light and energy. It was a humbling spectacle, a testament to the cosmos' scale and power. Yet, it filled me with a profound sense of isolation. We were like passengers on a runaway train, hurtling through an alien landscape. The universe outside was a dynamic, ever-changing entity. This movement was a reminder of our insignificance in the grand scheme. The messages from Earth had ceased long ago. The ever-increasing distance, coupled with the time dilation, meant that any attempt at communication was futile. We were effectively alone, cut off from everything we had ever known and loved. I often found myself staring out of the observation deck, gazing at the distorted tapestry of stars, wondering about the fate of Earth. Had humanity achieved its interstellar dreams, or had it succumbed to the countless threats that plagued our species? We had no way of knowing. The silence from home was deafening. It was a constant reminder of the price we paid for our journey into the unknown. We had sacrificed everything our families, our friends, our connection to humanity. All in the name of exploration, in the hope of securing a future for a species that might no longer exist. The weight of our isolation was immense. It hung over us like a shroud, a constant reminder of the vast gulf that separated us from everything we held dear. We were adrift in a sea of stars our only companions, the ghosts of memories, and the faint hope that our journey would not be in vain. The years aboard Echo blurred into an indeterminate stream of cosmic wonders and profound solitude. We worked, we studied, we explored the universe unfolding before our very eyes. Yet a part of me always lingered back on that pale blue dot, suspended in time. I often thought about my legacy. Would they remember us as pioneers? I found solace in the knowledge that our journey was not in vain. We had pushed the boundaries of human knowledge, expanded our understanding of the universe. A legacy etched in starlight, a testament to the enduring spirit of exploration. I no longer clung to the hope of returning to Earth. That dream, once a beacon in the darkness, had faded with the passing years, replaced by a quiet acceptance of our fate. We were voyagers on a one-way journey, our lives a continuous loop of scientific observation, technological maintenance and quiet contemplation. Yet, there was a strange beauty in our predicament. We were free from the constraints of time, our lives stretched out before us like an endless canvas. We had the opportunity to witness cosmic events that unfolded over eons, to study the universe with a clarity and perspective that no earthbound civilization 
could ever hope to achieve. Our journey, I realized, was not about reaching a destination. It was about the experience itself, about the endless pursuit of knowledge, about the sheer audacity of humanity daring to venture into the great cosmic unknown. And so we embrace the unending journey. Our lives are testament to the boundless potential of the human spirit. Our existence, a flicker of consciousness, adrift in the vast cosmic ocean, forever searching, forever exploring, forever in awe of the infinite wonders that lay beyond the reach of our pale blue dot. A dot I regret leaving, for even in this endless exploration, absolutely nothing has compared to the beauty into which I was fortunate enough to be born.